Hello friends, I am Dr. Sarthak and I am an associate consultant in MS Ramaya Narayana Heart Center and along with me today is Dr. Ravi Shankar Shetty. He is a senior consultant cardiothoracic surgeon and uh, with many years of experience performing cardiac surgeries in Bangalore. So today we will be talking about a topic which is very important for us, very, very much necessary for us and something which is of interest about that is about cardiac transplants that is heart transplants and something about which uh, few people know but uh, still they are interested in that is minimally invasive cardiac surgeries or keyhole surgeries hello sir hello so coming straight jumping straight ahead to the topic uh, your center is the leading center for cardiac transplants since the last four years since the time uh, the cardiac transplants have started in uh, Karnataka in, our, in uh, MS Ramaya Narayan Heart Center. So, what exactly is a heart transplant? See, a heart transplant is done for people uh, who have a weak heart. The function of heart is uh, basically to pump blood to all the organs and the whole body and supply nutrition. When this pumping mechanism fails, such patients require heart transplant and this will be the final treatment after all other treatments have failed. And who are the patients who require these transplants? There are different types of patients. For example, a patient who's uh, had a heart attack because of blocks in the coronary artery and a bypass surgery or stent doesn't work for him and medical treatment has failed. So now he is in cardiac failure. So the end stage cardiac failure, they require a heart transplant. Or a valve patient where valves are damaged and heart has become weak. When other options are failed, then we do a heart transplant or congenital heart disease uh, children yes. who have uh, heart function is reduced and uh, no other treatment options are available, we do a heart transplant. And some patients who have arrhythmia problem which can't be corrected um, by other uh, methods, again heart transplant is done. Uh, dilated cardiomyopathy, restrictive cardiomyopathy, there are many conditions who require heart transplant. So I have listed a few. So it's basic the, uh, basically the, the last glimmer of hope for the patients who have no other way yeah, out. Yeah, it's for patients who are in end stage cardiac failure and we right. try other options uh, with which they can lead a normal life. If it's not possible, then we advise them to go heart transplant and we uh, require a test to see whether they're fit and eligible for heart transplant. And do these patients have a normal life after a transplant, heart transplant? Yeah, most of them have a normal life, so we assess whether the patient is fit for heart transplant. So these are the patients who would have died within six months or a year without heart transplant. So then uh, we, uh, when we give them a new life, for first year they'll have to be a little careful with regards to rejection and infection. After that uh, they can lead a normal life. In the first two, after two, three months they can lead a normal life, but they have to be careful about uh, rejection and infection and they'll have to do a little more frequent visits to the hospital otherwise they can lead a normal life at the end of 12 years about 50 to 60 percent of them are still alive and doing well wow so 12 10 years 12 years they survive and lead a good life right. after transplant that's great news and uh, where do you get these hearts from so for the transplant what happens is the patient when they come uh, we assess them investigate them and then when we see they are fit for transplant or this is the final option for them we register them with the government agency uh, which is the protocol and it is a must and according to their seniority they get the heart so what happens when uh, some uh, form of uh, brain dead the donor has to be a brain dead patient right sir we can't take uh, heart from a living donor unlike kidney or liver because heart is only one organ and it can't be right. shared so when the patient is brain dead any hospital all over india preferably we take it closer to the place of the recipient so that the operation time and the, you know success chances are improved. more so, uh, but for some patients who are really sick, sometimes we'll have to go outside the state and take. So it is notified uh, who's brain dead and according to the seniority, they get the uh, heart. From so here probably patient. the public has a great role to play. To public and uh, yeah, great role. Uh, the donation, donation is a noble part. cause and right. the family is uh, doing a noble cause by donating not only heart, the kidney, lungs, nice. liver, cornea, eyes, all that. Uh, as possible. True sir, true. 
and and uh, along with this system this heart transplant there is another interesting uh, uh, procedure and set of uh, uh, facilities available uh, which have come up in the news in recent years the lvad bivad the so called artificial hearts uh, not artificial hearts exactly but there something uh, sim so could you just explain a little more in detail what exactly are these lvads bivads so what happens is some patients for example uh, they are not eligible for heart transplant for some reason some for example someone has a malignancy recent past and then we can't uh, do a heart transplant or uh, some other there are other causes like if his kidney function is in borderline after doing transplant we think it will going to deteriorate with the immunosuppression so our patient is aged and not uh, eligible for heart transplant. such patients we put something called a vad when the heart is weak lvad for the left ventricle and if both left and right ventricle we call it bivad mostly it is lvad and uh, so when that acts like a pump instead of a heart i mean instead of doing a heart transplant we put a pump in the chest cavity and the cables come out which has to be recharged uh, but it acts like a pump and the results are as good as heart transplant for the first 2 years Great. and there are something called temporary vats for supposing a patient is not fit for heart transplant right. we put them on temporary vats so support the heart and perfuse the whole body what happens is a heart failure patient they come sometimes was very late very late so what happens the kidney function liver function all are deteriorated so we put this temporary vats to perfuse the kidney liver and other organs in the body and to improve those organs before we do a heart, heart transplant, transplant. so uh, that is the case we call, put temporary vats and by vats both left and right ventricular as well we put by vats and we have done many of them in our uh, center so bridge to the transplant uh, yeah, so that so bridge to the heart transplant, transplant. it's called bridge to heart transplant right, or decision to heart decision transplant. transplant so what happens when we put these vats we see whether the kidney and liver improves if it doesn't improve then he is not eligible for transplant, transplant. then we we'll have to think of putting a permanent vat right. permanent vat too great and uh, uh, could you give us some example something interesting that you have come across in in your experience over the last 4 uh, odd years something that you saw so we have a few cases one patient uh, came from uh, uttar pradesh uh, to us he had to take a air ambulance and come he had a heart attack and heart got damaged in up and they put a stent but the heart didn't recover fully because he, because he had reached the hospital late then he went to delhi and other hospitals you know repeatedly they had to do dialysis because when the heart fails fluid accumulates in the body and his kidney was deteriorating liver was deteriorating and then someone told him to come to our center ms raman our uh, heart center and uh, it was so late that commercial airlines refused to take him because he was very oh. sick then he had to take a air ambulance private uh, uh, flight and come okay. and he came to our center then again we saw all his liver kidney was deteriorated he had uh, fluid overload in the body he had swelling in the legs abdomen so then that he was not fit for a transplant his lung pressure was high so we put him on uh, uh, bivad right. that is left ventricular and right ventricular support for a month he lost about 15 kg of weight his liver and kidney regained and then we did a heart transplant now it's been a year almost and okay. he's doing well he comes for follow up regular he, he comes once in 4 months he has come uh, last a uh, month ago so initially they left to come later they can i can and he is doing all fine he he's walks doing, he's leading a normal life so Superb. he started working so one more patient was uh, following up in a hospital she had arrhythmia problems so what happened is we had uh, our cardiologist had asked uh, her to put a defibrillator which she refused and she had come just to the pharmacy at ramay hospital and she had a cardiac arrest arrest then the accident and emergency department they revived her and then we saw her heart function was about 15% then we we put her on just on the lvad again for a month her heart regained and then we removed the lvad without a transplant and now her heart function is recovered to normal and she's put a defibrillator and she is it's been this also has been about 8 months Oh, and others some children with who have taken poisoning yes i was coming to that poisoning or uh, such cases you know when the, all the organs suddenly shut down this acts like a pump, pump. heart is not so 
these patients they have recovered with heart function being normal. So there are many such examples where VAD, only VAD or only ECMO or ECMO or heart transplant has been done. Children also uh, have been uh, have undergone a transplant and how are, uh, if so, what has been your experience with uh, We have done the people? first uh, pediatric heart transplant at Rama in oh, Karnataka. Great. So great. the children also do very well. Okay. Uh, so actually the results are better, the younger the patient. So no, uh, in terms of, you know, less chance of infection, but rejection chance is more in yeah. children. So immunosuppression has to be little higher because the immunity is high. So it is a balance. If you go older patient, they'll have other complications like when you give immunosuppression steroids, they who are not diabetic or borderline diabetic become diabetic. There's more chance of infection and all that. But children, the and the, there's less chance of rejection because their immunity is low. But children, the opposite. The immunity will be high. So immunosuppression dose will be high. Doses. So it is a fine But balance. still they have a uh, relatively they, fairly they normal, normal, uh, life. normal Otherwise, life. Otherwise these children would have died. Right. So this is the final option for them. True, true. Absolutely true. Uh, coming to the, the next act, uh, part of our discussion. This is again something which is also quite close to your heart. You have uh, developed it uh, in your center. You have grown it to a particular level. Uh, what exactly is this minimal invasive or keyhole surgery? What does it mean? Minimal invasive heart surgery uh, is being done uh, more and more for more number of patients. This is what normally we do in cardiac surgery is all surgeries we cut, cut the uh, breast bone. Breast bone. The yes. bone is cut. So minimal invasive heart surgery depending on what type of surgery for the valves we go between the bones, between the ribs. So we don't cut any bones, we go between the ribs and it is a very small incision about uh, 3 centimeters or 2 inches. So uh, through that hole, we, uh, depending on which area of interest in the heart, uh, we go in that particular space or zone and do the heart, uh, heart surgery. For example, for a valve surgery, we go through the right intercostal space and uh, for a bypass surgery, we go through the left side and do a minimal invasive or a keyhole uh, surgery. And how, uh, how good is the results uh, in our center uh, for these minimal invasive surgeries or See, keyhole surgeries? Minimal invasive heart surgery uh, is not uh, practically possible for everybody. So we have to be careful in selecting the patients. There are some absolute right. contraindications and relative contraindications to do this procedure. So if you select the patient, it's quite safe. And uh, sometimes we'll have to most uh, stop the heart and do. So the uh, surgery can be done safely. So the selection of patient will be very it's crucial in, and decision making is important. And it should be explained to the patient that, you know, by chance something is not going well in minimal invasive, we'll have to Open. again reopen the sternum and do. And once they're willing only, we'll have to take forward this procedure. But then the aesthetic part will be quite good. Uh, Post-surgical, after the, the, the scar heals, the, the patient would be aesthetically uh, good looking, they won't have that big scar on their uh, yeah. body. There are two things, one is the scar, uh, cosmetically it is preferable and we don't cut the bone also. So sternum when you cut, you'll have to fix it with wires. Wires. Too. So as with regards to cosmetics, there's less loss of blood True. and there is uh, pain is uh, initial, I mean later. Recovery time Recovery pain. time is less, so they can go to work earlier. Uh, and the pain is less, pain is also and blood less. transfusion is less, less which, less, which yes. uh, decreases the risk of uh, added infection possibilities. There is always a chance of infection whenever there is blood transfusion, yes. which servers is trying to uh, point out that less trans transfusion, less risks. But less risk and less chance of infection as you do. So these are the benefits of uh, uh, minimal invasive surgery. Any uh, particular incident where, uh, where you had a very good result and uh, something uh, regarding uh, minimally invasive surgery? No, minimally invasive heart surgery we are doing regularly. The results are good, uh, there is nothing in particular case. So we are doing both valves and bypass surgery. That's so right. what happens is especially in females, the scar will be below the breast. So they can't make out even the surgery is done. Better. So that's a big uh, advantage of doing uh, Minimal invasive cardiac surgery. It gives a psychological boost, boost to them. And in the children, we can do it in the axilla also. Oh, 
So when the child takes out his shirt when his hand is down, they can't, you can't even make out the make out. Uh, scar. So it is a very good procedure, but it should be carefully selected and done, and then it, uh, the results are excellent. Thank you, Dr. Abhishekar Shetty. Thank you, Dr. Sir. That has been quite informative and a brilliant explanation on what exactly is a heart transplant, what exactly is a minimally uh, invasive uh, or a keyhole surgery. The audience, I am sure, has got a lot of points to take back home. Now they will be more aware and less scared of a heart transplant. See, heart transplant gives a new lease of high hope to people who had none. And minimally invasive surgery has got many advantage, not the least uh, almost negligible scar which gives a big psychological boost to the patients who are undergoing the surgery. So that's it for today. Thank you.